<laughs> Welcome to the last uh, lecture in the series of our 30th anniversary lecture of Peace by Peaceful Means. And um, thank you for having been with us for this long, if you have, wherever you're sitting around the world. It's been a great delight to have people here in the room and all of you uh, online, so to speak, out there. Uh, the last lecture is a special one in the sense that it is about a country that you probably do not know so much about, namely Burundi. Most people know a lot about Rwanda, but not so much about Burundi. Although much of what has happened and much of the characteristics are the same. And once upon a time, the two countries was one, were one country. And the um, <clears throat> lecturer is a young student in medicine from Bujumbura, the capital, who at the moment is in Sweden, and whose situation is difficult because of the increasing amount of violence in Burundi um, related to the unconstitutional third term of President Pierre Nkurno Sisa, who is becoming increasingly authoritarian, to uh, sit, uh, have a third five-year term, also in contravention of the Arusha Peace Accords. So um, what is also nice to tell you is that Cynthia Ngozi is the latest or newest TFF associate. We very happy having you here. Uh, it's uh, my honor and my privilege. Well, you will see when it develops. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Come up here and tell us about Burundi and what your hopes are for a better Burundi. Because I perhaps should say, sorry, that TFF has been working in Burundi since 99, between 99 and 2012, that's 13 years, with training of young people. The reason we know each other is that you were a member of a Peace Youth Club called Amahora Peace, the Amahora Youth Club, Amahora meaning peace in the local Kirundi language. And so um, we've been working with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs there when things were much better than they are today, and also with NGO and civil society development, teaching Gandhi, teaching conflict resolution, teaching forgiveness, um, and learning a hell of a lot from the country where so much suffering has taken place. So we are looking greatly forward to listening to your presentation as a young person who has ideas about how Burundi could become better again. Because it, there was hope in Burundi, and at the moment there's not so much hope. Welcome. There is still hope. <laughs> I'm ours to everyone. Uh, um, I'm going to do a like, self-introduction, small one. I'm a medical student uh, at National University in Burundi, but I'm also, what we forgot to say is that I'm a social activist, actually. Uh, I you, lead, you would say that. Yes. I lead, <laughs> I lead a community-based organization in Burundi. And uh, I'm, um, it's an organization aiming at uh, ac uh, make, uh, making access, helping improving access to education quality in Burundi, especially to um, street children, because the st street children are so many in Burundi. and. I'm one of these people who believe that in my country education is uh, one of most uh, one most the most actually powerful weapons against poverty, and uh, it's um, it's then what what I'm involved in, and we are working with with uh, right now. I was or I was working with 150 children up to now, and um, yes. Until the 26th of April this year, where um, when there was uh, this crisis, the explosion of this crisis in Burundi, that was my word. I was uh, st studying, but I was also working at, uh, as a social activist. But uh, until then, I found myself involved in this movement against the third term uh, um, movement against I mean, this violation of um, this movement against violation of democracy and uh, basic freedom to Burundians. That was so arrogant to me. I'm uh, also one of young generation who want to see change in my country. We are tired, we are bored to see women, uh, 
old generation disappointing us. We need new leaders in my country. Yes, so now I fled my country, I can't go back because I was threatened, but also because I don't want to relieve the war. I, I'm also one of the young generation who, who grew up with, with, within war. It's, uh, this peace agreement in 2000 just ended um, a 15 years uh, ethnic-based war. I, we don't need, we don't want to see war again. Enough is enough, you know. And um, yeah, so as Jan said, Burundi is the third poorest country in the world. It's a country where 66% Burundians are living under poverty line. Mm. It's also a country where um, the GDP per capita is less than 300,000 uh, US dollars. It's really shameful. And we have so pot potential in my country. We have people, we have, uh, it's also, recently I read an article where um, uh, from, uh, I think it was World Economic Forum, where they say that Burundi has uh, the most, um, the biggest rate, where brain drain is the most, uh, is the, the biggest. So people are living and it's, it's just shameful. We should do better. We should change it. Um, I will talk about the crisis in Burundi, uh, the, the recent crisis, which, is, which main issue is that um, violation of the constitution because they are people who uh, who are only interested uh, about corruption and uh, um, about leadership, bad, bad governance, and a system which is just awful, awful, and um, a system where we really want to get rid of. That's why people, um, many Burundians, uh, political um, leaders, opposition sides. Even the international community uh, condemned this, uh, uh, the, this uh, condemned this uh, the nomination of the Pia Murundiza to to um, to get elected for the third time. So of course this announcement resulted in the mass protests, and um, which uh, many of them turned to be violent, and uh, we. The government, of course, responded by uh, sending police. A repressive police um, were uh, by shooting live protesters. Were so many up to now? I think uh, two hundred. We have the Bur Burundi counts <coughs> almost two hundred thousand refugees. Um, One fifty. One fifty. Um, killed by police during the protest, uh, protests, 700 wounded people and uh, almost 2,000 2, people in prison. I mean, if it, con it continues like that, maybe the, we will, they will not get places to put people in prison. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, the government was also so repressive repressive by um, Muslim independent media, restricting uh, access to social media and threatening all the people against them. We've seen democracy turning into a dictatorship system where uh, all op opponents uh, against the power, the ruling party, were just to be killed. Till now, I think, and furthermore, of course, there was uh, a failed coup, uh, assassination of most uh, prominent leaders, opposition leaders, and also uh, presence of uh, extremely violent um, ruling party youth wing who are armed and who rule the country. I mean, they replaced even the police. They do whatever they want. It's they. They run the country into a chaos, completely chaotic situation. 
So I was part of, uh, I'm, I of course joined the movement against the, uh, the third term. Of course. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and uh, I would like to highlight here how women got involved. We've seen women like standing up and saying no enough is enough. They resist, we res we, <laughs> because I was part of that. We resisted tear gas from the police. We resisted um, live bullets. We resisted, um, we were the first to get into the capital. That was really a victory. Uh, in a society where you know maybe women don't have rights. Women are not considered. So that was really uh, a victory. I also want to highlight here a new sense of solidarity uh, among Burundians. That was, um, I would say, a miracle to see all different ethnic groups together fighting for something, for a common cause. That was really brilliant. We never see, I never seen this before. I mean, Tutsi and Hutu and Twa people together fighting for the same and hiding each other or, you know, helping each other. This sense of solidarity and volunteerism, women were feeding, uh, cooking and feeding protesters and uh, young people involved, you know, helping wounded people, bringing them to the hospitals. That was really amazing. And uh, I also want to highlight um, the censorship of social media, which characterized the, the misuse of the power by the bad leaders that we have. Um, I remember in 2000, uh, during the military dictatorship um, of Uyoya, I was uh, the, the, the president at the time. Uh, the rule was uh, under this cut. You don't ask, you don't tell. <laughs> like, obeying that rule, you, you knew that you could survive. You could avoid problems also. So uh, under the current, uh, the recent uh, power, it changes became no like, no share, no comments, and most of all, no posts <laughs> at Facebook. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't do that, you know that you can survive. You can live your life. You, I mean, only the pro-government people can, uh, can publish what they like. They, they can say whatever they like, the others like, me, we, we should maybe comment on uh, sports and uh, music and football and dance. That's, that's really a pity. And also, uh, I had to mention that after a strong repression at the failed coup and daily assassinations, the resistance is still there. Of course, uh, there no longer demonstrations, but the resistance, the resistance is there under a new form. People are there. They can do anything, but because they fear to be killed, but they re they still resisting. I really admire my people for that, and maybe very soon we will see a change. Um, the second point I would like to talk about is to highlight the deep roots of uh, the Burundi crisis. Of course, the main reason is the constitution and the peace agreement violation. But we should not also forget the weak and corrupted leadership, which I told, I said, people want to get rid of. Although the media and uh, the um, current crisis in Burundi has focused on the debate on the third term, this, this is actually an easy to sell substitute for the real issue at stake. Because the main problem is the social um, economic development deterioration. People are so angry. People are hungry also. Um, Murundiza weak leadership over the past 10 years led many people to believe that they could make it without him. By overthrowing him, uh, they could kill two birds with one stone. At the same time, reinforcing the democracy principle, um, which limits um, two, to, to which limits to only two two times, 
but also promote through promoting uh, the emergence of a different kind of governance and actually with visionary leaders, accountable leaders, people that we can count on, people that we think that they can change our country. If I try to make an assessment uh, over the last 10 years, the uh, unemployment rates from uh, 2005 doubled to now. And um, in the, uh, the food and security concern now, 70% of Rwandan population. Basically, the main thing is people are hungry. People are angry, are hopeless. They don't know wh what to do, and they don't know how to make it with bad leaders. And uh, seeing those a small group enriching themselves while the population, the mass is still starving, is just something that we cannot accept. Uh, I, <laughs> there's something that uh, my president keep on saying that, uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> Um, it's only 1% of the population who's uh, making trouble because it's actually uh, people living in the capital, it's people like uh, literate people. Because the mass, I must also say that only in my country less than 10% goes to universities. The illiterate, uh, we have mass of illiterate people, so they don't know, they just follow. And uh, I have a question to, to, my, to my president, actually. Even, even though we are only 1%, it's all about democracy. We have to be listened to. So I also have to talk about uh, the political position, leadership, and the civil society. We are also tired of them and bored about, uh, of their... They are... Um, their leadership. I mean, it's disappointing to see that they want to coordinate the movement online, sitting in their cyber cafe and um, making decisions from there. We don't see them. Where are they? We also, um, as young people, a uh, young generation facing, demonstrating, like, we need to see responsibility from the civil society organization opposition sides, uh, opposition leaders too. Um, yeah, we want also to see leaders. We want to see them proposing and suggesting like clear uh, projects of development for the next years to come. No one has showed that he's, uh, he has this capacity and this ability. So we don't trust them. Um, I mean, we need only, I think, only a strong civil society and responsible and accountable that can really um, articulate our needs for freedom and well-being. Well-being is all what people need. I think there must be heroes who can organize, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a hero. <laughs> That's why maybe I'm behind only the screen. But what I want is freedom and peace in my country. I don't want to see poor people in my country. I want to see all, to see all Burundian school, uh, children going to school, learning. And uh, I want to see my country, I, I want to see a new Burundi. And I think we can make it. Um, okay, about the international community. Where are they? It seems like Burundi is a forgotten country, as Jan said. We don't, we don't benefit from this um, attention, international attention. Is that maybe because we don't have uh, the stock, huge stock of natural resources? But why only Syrians? Why only Libyans and uh, Afghan, Afghanistan people or Iraq uh, and, and so on are only keeping attention, international attention. Come on, Burundi has 10 million people. <laughs> we need, and, and we know that the, the uh, United Nations have the legitimacy 
to intervene? What are they working for or waiting for? To see a new genocide? I think it's now, it's time. We need, we need people to get to know what is happening, what is going on. I think Jan will have to start to me, but <laughs> um, I will try to suggest solutions to make uh, some ideas about how we can solve this conflict. I think a third term in itself is not pro a problem, at least for me personally. I don't think it's a problem. What matters is, is how uh, is how maybe the, is this relationship uh, with the leader and his people is, and in my view, it's what makes it a problem in my country and doesn't make it a problem. Maybe in Germany or in the U.S., this limitation of um, of uh, terms. The power of a nation resides in the power of its vision. I think we are also at one of those rare uh, historic crossroads where we can think, rethink, and reshape my country. The, the, what we want, what, how we want Burundi to be, and collectively. I also think the most challenging times often offer most promising opportunities. I think so. And um, I think in the, mid in the midst of our troubles, Resist possibility to imagine and to shape Burundi. Um, so three main ideas. Nonviolence. I will always say that nonviolence is what we need. This crazy idea of solving problems in my country by violence is is just something to forgive, to forget, because we suffered. Burundians suffered. My generation suffered from wars. I, I grew up with war and, you know, I'm almost 30 years and it's still war. We need to see um, a country where we can sleep peacefully without fear that you can be attacked or that you should flee your country. I'm forced now to stay here, but it's not what I want. I, I would like to contribute to, the, to build my country. Um, I think enough is enough for violence. We need non-violence, non-violent issues, non-violent solutions. We need, instead we should instill a dialogue among all parties and try to fix this problem with uh, dialogue. And also, um, this dialogue will also um, go with restoration of uh, democratic rule of law. I said that Arusha agreement, um, peace agreement, have built a national government system in which all sociopolitic um, components uh, were represented and protected. So I think we should make it if we restore the democratic law of law, building on the achievements of uh, um, the peace agreement, of Arusha uh, peace agreement. Uh, that we worked on uh, the last 15 years. But the secondly, we need creation of economic opportunities for all. I mean, in a country where 60% of the population are under 25, and the half of that are under 18, it's really a matter of national survival. And um, I think the main reasons um, that maybe people, uh, the leadership we have didn't work on that, it was lack of the, the willingness to do so, but it was also uh, a lack of technical capacity to implement appropriate policies <coughs> and uh, clear priority setting, settings for the most pressing, pressing socioeconomic problems for economy recovery in Burundi. I mean, as a requirement for peace and stability, to maintain stability in Burundi. And uh, third, the last, is the emergence of uh, a third voice. I say that we, don't, we no longer believe in a ruling party. They're disappointing us. They, 
and now he does enough. But they also don't believe in the opposition side. They they showed actually they really proved they made a proof to us that they they can't do it. So they should let us do it. We can do it. We need this third voice of young generation with clean hands, no war criminals. We need um, this voice, this third voice that rises above personal interests. Young people um, who actually have better standards and values where we can focus on elements that unite us and no longer divide us. We need um, a new voice which propose a new society configured on a fairness of meritocracy. We need real, really good leaders that are capable to do it, that really have the capacity, not only um, this charisma to do it, but we need people who have capacity to do it, to make it. And um, finally, it's every man and every woman that uh, has woken up to his or to her potential to be an active participant in the design of a better future for Burundi. Thank you. Mm. I'm a horror. I'm a horror. I'm a horror. the um, relationship with your neighbor Rwanda at the moment? Um, it's, it's not a good relationship because uh, Kagame, who is the Rwandan, Rwandese uh, country, is once would like to intervene and is criticizing Burundi, a Burundian president. Mm. But he, he actually, he's not supposed to do it because he also wants to turn, to change his, he's up to change his constitution for the third time. Mm. So this issue on third term uh, um, for the president is actually um, a big issue in Africa. It's not only in Burundi, it's generalized. So they they can't they, they don't have anything to, to teach us. The pro the, um, I will say that the difference is that at least in Rwanda we can see we can see a change over the last twenty years. The country developed a lot a lot. The, uh, we we've seen improvement of conditions, and uh, I think it's what people expect. Yes. So it's quite different. So why has Rwanda been successful economically and socially and yeah. Burundi hasn't? I think, uh, as I said, um, the power of a nation resides in its vision, long-term vision. Mm. We have leaders who are not able mm. to do so. They, they don't have capacity. They don't have this leadership. It's, it's, um, it's, corrupt, it's a corrupting system that actually can't uh, help uh, and uh, develop the country. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you think it's about leadership. It's about bad leadership and bad government but system. People, mm, people must be saying, I'm talking about ordinary people, the mass of people, they must all know about what's happening in their neighbor, uh, in their neighborhood. Aren't they saying, you know, it can be done, we're the same kind of people, same kind of resources, same corner of the world. If they can do it, why can't we do it? What's wrong with these guys who are bossing us around, who are in control? Aren't the people ready to rise up? People are ready to raise. That's why I was saying mm -hmm. they, they protested, they demonstrated, they faced repressive and violent mm -hmm. police. It's because 
they think that they can make it. They want to see change. But it, there's also something that um, I'd like to say is that it's only it's not only about governance and about leadership, but we didn't get enough attention from the international community. Mm -hmm. It's something really important that we have to emphasize on. Mm -hmm. We didn't get um, enough uh, funds international internationally. Mm -hmm. I mean, this development aid assistance, uh, mm -hmm. we didn't get it enough. So, yeah. I think you could add actually to that point that everybody knows the name Rwanda. Mm -hmm. The Rwanda was the case where three times more people were killed during the genocide than in your country. About 900,000 people, only quotation mark, 300,000 in your country. Rwanda got the movies. Rwanda got the books. This man, Kagame, who is a major war criminal in our world, has had all the support from the Western world. And if you go to Kigali, the capital of Rwanda, it is a different world with skyscrapers and shopping malls and fancy hotels and all that. And when you get to Burimbura, you know, uh, there's not much of that. And if there are hotels, they're built by the corrupt elite. And there's no kind of particular beauty or elegance or development. And Kagame has done one thing that your president didn't do, and that was to put a lot of investment into education. But the international community has failed completely in helping Burundi and put everything, all the embassies, all the privileges, all the investment, all the development aid, all the loans into Rwanda. And so I would, I would say on that point, yes, everything you said was right, but it has also been immensely more difficult for Burundi to rise up and get socioeconomic development going than it has been in Rwanda. And we know that Rwanda is supported by the West because Absolutely. it does a dirty job in Congo and all these countries. Absolutely. And finally, which I think is worth saying, and you, you didn't mention it, but I think we should all listen very carefully. Say, this is not a Hutu Tutsi Twa thing. Yeah. This is not, and that's a formidable thing about Burundi. And I've had the privilege to follow it over, over time. You did reconciliation very well. That's I almost no right. help from anyone. Mm -hmm. Including where were all the Western NGOs? We were two or two or three there, mm. and you had a tiny UN mission, who everybody thought was weird and stupid. It was a very good mission with many of the best leaders of that UN mission, but it didn't get international support. It didn't get the money every year that we have been involved. What was actually paid to you in uh, as proportion of what was pledged by donor countries was less than forty percent at average. You know, you got all kinds of promises to Burundi and the money never turned up. Yeah. I'm not saying it explains everything, but it's part of it because you had a beautiful formulation. International society, where are you? Mm -hmm. We are certainly needing an international society's care now if we're going to avoid either a terrible civil war or even, God forbid, a genocide in your country. But that again means that there's something we can do. We can go for our own governments and lobby them to recognize that conflict and do something about yes. it. Mm -hmm. yes. so that is one little thing we can do. That's true. And if there is a case where you could have a true humanitarian intervention mm -hmm. organized by the UN with military means, getting rid of this leadership, putting them up in a house arrest in the local hotel, and spend six months on doing a kind of manage, management government, mm. then you could install whatever would come, but there would have to be generally free elections. Now, the reason the international community doesn't even think of this is, why should they spend time on a country that produces coffee, tea, and banana? There's no oil, there's no known big proposals or anything, whereas Libya and Syria and all the other things were interesting. This is the cynicism of the international community and the racism underlying Western culture. There are black people in a little country in Africa, 10 million. Mm -hmm. And we don't react after almost one year That's of everything Sweden, showing yes. that it's going the wrong way. Absolutely. Thank this you. is very dangerous for us also. Talk about refugees. <laughs> um, so you, uh, another question. Uh, okay. What is your, your African countries doing? <laughs> that's <laughs> that's a really good question. 
I'm so disappointing, but the African Union, mm. where are they? When I, m maybe when I'm talking about international community, I put them in, into the group. Mm. It's, it's, it's a so bad leadership. We, but we should also learn that we expected so much. We wanted to count on them, but it's the same. As I said, it's the same story everywhere in, the, in, the, in Africa. Um, they're covering each other. They trying to. They all, but we have we we don't have visionary um, leaders from Africa. It's really disappointing. It's it's time to get to have people we we know we, we know we can count on. Mm -hmm. It's not only uh, about Burundi, but it's so funny to see that um, concerning the the people who are dying in the Mediterranean Sea. That African Union have has never reacted to that. Mm -hmm. It's really disappointing. We don't have good leaders, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know where they are. <laughs> I don't know. I can't respond to you mm -hmm. to this question. Well, they appointed Museveni to be mediator. How yeah. many terms have, has he had? Yeah, and <laughs> he's, been a, he's been a president for thirty years. Or something. Yes, yes. Uh, we've got recently um, a mediator for the Brazilian crisis, and that was uh, the Ugandan president, mm -hmm. who actually has been on power for thirty-three years. So, what what does what can we expect? What what kind of impact can we expect from from him? <laughs> you see, it's this system that not really promote excellence or. Um, I don't know, it's, it's just disappointing for young generations like mine. People who know what, they sh what should be done, but people don't do it. They do what they should not do, but they know, maybe they don't know, I don't know. But we know what should be done to bring change. We'll help you. Mm. Yes. <laughs> All of us sitting here, you have the masses behind you. <laughs> Maybe I'm the new Che Guevara. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. New Mandela. <laughs> Mandalina. <laughs> okay, any more questions, comments? Good suggestions to save Burundi before it's too late? Oh or we can all think of it, actually, and perhaps write a little note in our newspaper that there is something we ought to pay attention to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because Absolutely. it is also a matter of knowledge and information. Very few people Absolutely. know anything about Burundi. I myself would not have known anything if by not by coincidence I happened to have met your Minister of Higher Education in the US who said, come over to us. I've never ever gone to Burundi without that happy coincidence. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm a horror. I'm a horror. <laughs> I'm a horror. Okay. Thank you so much to all of you. Um, for coming here today and for those of you who've been sitting um, and seeing uh, the broadcast I have two important things just to say in 10 seconds one is they will all be available on TFF's YouTube and Vimeo channel these 11 lectures yesterday and today on uh, edited if you will the way they have taken place even the dogs barking will be in them and the second thing is if you have liked some of what you heard here and you appreciate that there is free research not paid by the state and not paid by corporations, we are really grateful if you would make just a small donation to TFF, which you can do on the yellow give button on www.transnational.org. You cannot miss it. It's yellow. It's big, right on the <laughs> middle of the page. And you may think it is ridiculous to, let's say, send the equivalent of a cup of coffee. No, it is not, if many enough do it. The alternatives, dear friends, is that there will be no civil society in the future. And we will all be dependent on governments. And NGOs will not be non-governmental, they will become near-governmental. And I can tell you one thing, TFF is never going to be near-governmental. We want to be an alternative to the militarist policies, the armament, the wars. And if you think that's important, one of the organizations you should support is TFF. Thank you very much. And all the best to you wherever you are.
Peace. I'm a horror.